Well, it's November 11th, and it's cold. It was a. Uh, it was 16 when I first woke up this morning. It's my last hunt here in Ohio. Obviously, don't have high hopes, but I just come back here to where I killed my buck last year. Had a really good hunt last year on a cold, cold day. Maybe we can make lightning strike twice in the same spot. It just seems those big ones have been locked down for the last three, four, five days. Maybe we can catch one trying to find another doe. But it's cold. I can hear some stuff moving around in this creek bottom. It is dead calm. I did get in clean this morning as far as I know. We're gonna get quiet. I'm gonna hunt at least till lunch. If I'm seeing deer and stuff, I may hunt till dark. Stick with me. Well, finally, we just saw a shooter. I never got a good look at him. He like circled around me. He cut up the ridge in front of me over here went up into this bedding area. I grunted a couple times, but he didn't have any interest. There's another deer. Get a good look at it. <coughs> He's going a different. He's headed back to that. That deer was headed back to the bedding area too. I could tell it was a buck, but I couldn't tell what it was. That one I saw a second ago was big. I couldn't, I never got a great look at it. But I saw, I caught him through the brush with my binoculars and his tines just looked, you know, super tall. We're going to hang in here. <laughs> See, I think the same thing happened last year. Last year in the morning, I heard a buck grunting and stuff on this ridge I'm set up on. I was actually set up on the other side of the creek bottom last year. And I think it was that buck, he went up to bed. I caught him coming out. We're gonna get back and get our head on a swivel here. They're coming back to bed.
what a morning. Phew, I didn't get much on camera except for that one eight pointer. Well, I don't know if he's still an eight, he broke his G2, but I've been covered up in deer all morning long. It's been dead for the last hour and a half, maybe two hours. But uh, I had that real good buck come by first thing and to get him on film and then the, as I was doing that interview I saw another deer across from me so I was like well I might want to not do any interviews for a little bit and just kind of watch and um, I saw that one buck I filmed and then there was a, another 100 inch 8 pointer or so with him that buck that I filmed he uh, he was grunting in this creek bottom and I grunted back and he uh walked just out of sight and kind of rubbed the tree. You could hear him thrashing a tree pretty good. And then he uh, come straight in on the string. Um, he was probably at six, seven steps when he looked up at me. I don't have any back cover whatsoever in this tree, but it is what it is. He, if he'd been a deer I wanted to shoot, I could have shot him. Then I saw uh, the doe across the ridge over there where I hunted last year. And I saw uh, two deer walking across the creek bottom before all that. I never got an ID on them or anything. I didn't bring any food in for an all day sit and I think what I may do is I may leave all my stuff in the tree and sneak back to the truck real quick and I've got some snacks and stuff in there I'll grab them and sneak back in it's about 20 after 11 right now it was an incredible morning it, it was very very similar to the morning I had last year uh, on the 11th when I killed the buck in the evening As much as I'd like to get heading home, I, I don't think I could live with myself if I didn't stay to see what happened this evening. It's great conditions. Day winds have picked up and the way these ridges lay, it, it, it swirls a little bit in the day. But I think I'm gonna go get me a some snacks real quick out of the truck and I'll be right back and we're back I stepped off the platform about 11.30 and it's 12.15 and I'm back in
got 45 minutes left in my Ohio season. And obviously it's probably not going to happen, but uh, I'm good with that. Uh, there's no guarantees in this sport. Um, I like to challenge myself, which is why I'm hunting these public lands. I've got the opportunities to hunt private if I wanted, but this is how I want to do it. Um, I can uh, go home tonight or start drive home tonight with a clear head about all of it. I've learned a lot and I've honestly done everything I can, like everything I could possibly do been here for like 15 days I've hung, hung I don't know how many different sets on run and gun I've kayaked in 20 degree weather I've kayaked and then walked over a mile into places this is all with a 55 pounds on my back stand stick filming gear everything I walked nearly two miles to one spot and set up on a buck and got an opportunity at a 115-120 class deer and didn't take it. I've, I've done everything imaginable. But with public, you just never know with people, you know. I had one place I was keying in on and place I got that opportunity at that one buck and a bunch of people that showed up to hunt it last week so I let them have it and come hunt some other stuff but anybody if you kill a mature buck on public land that is a accomplishment to be proud of it really is regardless of score you kill that three four year old plus deer on public land he's seen some stuff he's probably been shot at He's been around the block. I'm sure I'll uh, I'll find a way to gather my words and put it into words a little better. Uh, maybe driving home tonight after I've had time to decompress. I mean, I've I've just been thinking so hard on how to get one on the ground. That I hadn't had time to think much about anything other than how to kill a deer. But it's been a great trip, you know. It's it's not always all about killing them. I got to spend, you know, a week and a half with my best friend. He was able to kill a deer, which was awesome. Um, I'll remember this trip for a long, long time. And my whole, my whole goal with all of this is just learning I love learning new stuff I love learning new tactics I love learning things about deer I really learned a lot about tracks seeing uh, you know some decent bucks walk through an area and check their track like that buck I passed earlier was a decent deer probably a two-year-old his track's pretty small so when you find them great big tracks it's it's a good one I know going in I think we're going to go to Illinois next year instead of Ohio and I think one thing I'm really going to try and focus on a little better this is the one department I could be better at definitely I could be better at everything but the one main thing is access and then to kind of compound that wind um, you know I was I was taking into consideration wind direction on how I was setting up but I think it'll be a little easier to do in a little more of a rolling hill situation or flatter ground but let's enjoy these last 35 40 minutes maybe we'll get to see a deer who knows I know the squirrel population in Ohio is doing very well